Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday to everyone coming in. Don't mind me, I'm just smiling at an angel walking by. <laughs> Hope everyone is having a great day. It is Thursday, and we are so grateful to come into your home tonight. We're going to wait just a few more minutes for, for others to join. And it's going to be a great time tonight. It's going to be a good time. Um, oh, hey, Faith and Aaron, good evening to you too. Um, I'm going to be teaching probably maybe 20 minutes and I'm going to start prophesying. Hey, Amen. I believe God. Oh, hey, there's my sister. Hey, Tanika. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good evening. Yeah, we're going to do a little personal prophecy at the end and hopefully. Um, well, I know for sure God will talk. Amen. He is so kind that he wants people to know what's on his mind, what's on his agenda, and what is your story about. Amen. And then tonight we're going to teach on the blessing. Um, just a few. Hey, Liz. What are you doing? Alex, my man is on. You know I got to talk to you. I'm going to call you personally. Call you, bro. <laughs> just to catch up so we can laugh some more. You know how we do it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hey, Elder Patsy, how you doing, ma'am? God bless you. Always a pleasant to see you. Amen. Yeah. So we got my um my oldest baby's in town. Uh, my daughter, she is in town, and if she um makes it over in time, I'm gonna have her get on here with me because she's gonna use her, her as a demonstration. What's up, Alex? A demonstration, but we'll see if she makes it on time. She's coming in from college, my oldest heart, <laughs> as it relates to children. Amen. And my beautiful wife is back in the background, emceeing and being the great producer that she is. So we bless God for her. Amen. Oh, glory. Amen. Just wait another minute. We're, we're going to get started. Give me about 20 minutes of your time, maybe 30, and then we're going to start prophesying. Amen. Let's see what the Lord is saying to his people. Hey, yes, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. So kind. <laughs> yes. She is the blessing. <laughs> yeah, she's the DJ, too, so. All that cool music you hear, that's not me, that's her. <laughs> Do we get a spiritual tonight, huh, honey? <laughs> Amen. We always spiritual. Well, as we wait a little bit, I want to get kind of started, kind of give a backdrop on um, why we started here. And thank you to those um, and those who went back and watched Sunday service. Uh, it was so kind of you guys to do that, and all the feedback we're getting is so positive. Um, the goal is never to promote us or our brand or nothing like that. It's to promote him, that being Jesus, and um, people are set free. People's um, records have been cleared, and they see that God actually loves them. So we we um, we thank God for that. Uh, even people from, from that we know from years back who, who struggle with condemnation of uh, breaking out of that thing. So we bless God for that. So amen to that. Uh, we do have a powerful service coming this Sunday, uh, dealing in the same vein-ish, and then God has me shifting uh, to something else. We're going to talk about the purpose on why we are here and uh, things like that. So I believe God's going to do what he does and do it grand. Amen. Uh, but without further ado, let me get started. Um, well, Lord, we thank you for this Thursday night. Lord, I got the ways you can teach. Teach your people, Lord, as only you know how to do, Lord. So we give you all the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hey man, so I like I said, I won't be on here talking a long time, but I'm going to give you what God has given me in terms of what is the blessing and how does that originate and what does that do for people. Amen. I think that um it's almost like a lost thing that's been lost to the church. Uh, but when you understand the blessing, uh, it'll change your entire world, it'll change your life, it'll change your children. Um, the blessing is something that I practice after learning from my mentor way back 15, 20 years ago, um, who taught on this particular subject and taught us the significance of what that means. If you give me, allow me a few minutes, I'll work this, work that vein, and then we'll get into um, uh, releasing the word. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, uh, turn to Colossians 1.16. And me having a teacher's anointing, um, I like to roll through the Bible a lot. So uh, bear with me as I, we roll through this Bible because this Bible is rich. It's full of life and it's full of word. Amen. Uh, Colossians chapter 116. I now got my handy dandy notes uh, right next to me. Help me stay on, ter- uh, on course. Colossians 116 says this, and I'm reading out of the uh, King James Version on tonight. And it says this here. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him for him. Now, one of the things that we understand by this verse is God is saying that I created everything both in the heavens and in the earth. And so what God is kind of predicting to us, not predicting, but showing us, is that we live in two realms. And depends on on what side you're on, um, depends on what you have access to. And I say that because when we were not saved, we were uh, in darkness. Amen. So we wasn't, we didn't have access to the marvelous light. Now, I'm going to put my little mouse pad up for a second. And you're not going to see me just for a brief minute. There's nothing wrong with your computer. It's me demonstrating. One of the things that the spirit world is more real than this world we live in. Amen. So everyone says, I I feel the spirit. I mean, you feel the world that's unseen to the natural eye. But when you think about God's kingdom and his advancement, he said he built two realms in the heavens and the earth. Amen. So you can be in one place like here. And then sometimes, uh, depending on your level of consecration or how God uses you, he'll take you to a higher realm. Amen. Or, or, or in the spirit. Sometimes that can be through dreams. Sometimes that can be through trances. Sometimes that can be all types of ways that God can take you to the spirit room. Or he can just open your eyes and you can see it um, for yourself. Now, just because something is not seen like me for a second does not mean that it does not exist. Amen. Now, that was my mouse pad. Probably wasn't the best example. Uh, when, I, when I do this lesson in person, I usually have volunteers of such and that nature. Now, just because it's not seen don't mean it, it exists. And God is saying that he created everything that we ever needed in spirit form. This is why um, if you go all the way back to Genesis, God is talking to um, Adam in such a way and talking to mankind. And you know what, let me qualify that because I'm going to talk about this on Sunday as well. God is talking to all of us, and I'm going to read this, and this may have been the first time you heard this, and if you have, um, just bear with us because there are some foundational things that I have to go over to uh, bring all this blessing all the way out. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and it reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, that's what God is saying. Let's make man in our image. Okay, next verse. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 28. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, what God is saying is he's talking to um, somebody, all right? Now, as you notice here, this is not Adam he's talking to. He's talking to them. So Adam is just one person, but now he's talking to them. And God uh, created man in his image, and then God, verse 28, blessed them. Now, if you go over to chapter 2 and you look at verse 7, it reads this. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground 
and breathed into the, his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, if you put your thinking cap on, we have a dilemma. We have in uh, chapter one that God talking to somebody, but then he creates somebody in chapter two. So that goes to prove that every person that would ever walk this planet, hear me out, um, God was talking to. And what does God do? The first thing he does is blesses them. And then in chapter two, he creates man. In, in verse number seven, you, you can read it in your own reading. So that lets me know that the spirit realm where God started from is more real than what we see or what's appeared. Because God is a God who deals with the spirit part of us. Now, if you can think about this, when Paul in Romans 12, he's saying, present your body. Well, how do you present your body? Is it by dancing? Is it by doing some, uh, some twirling? No, he means he's talking to the spirit form of you and I to present our body a living sacrifice. So Paul has an understanding that the thing that, call, that weighs the most on us is our spirit form and our spirit being. Now, we understand that man is three part beings. Man is a spirit, he lives in a body, and he has a soul. So that means that you and I live in a body, we have a soul, but ultimately our spirit is going to go somewhere when we are done with this life we live now. So that's proven that in this realm, and on this particular thing, that we uh, live in spirit form inside a body here in this world. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 3, that he has blessed us with all blessings in heavenly places. So what does that mean? And why does God put a demand or put an emphasis on the faith the reader? Because in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, he says, without faith, it's impossible to prove or please God. Amen. Because he understands that if we live in his natural world and God is saying that if you want to achieve your goals and do what you have to do, everything you need, I've already given you in spirit form. Now, I said earlier that we have access, we believe in God, to two sides of the coin. We're created just like God. Once we get saved, we open a new door of access unto the spirit world. Amen. Hey, Kelly. And that opens a door that where we can move with God on both sides. You can look, and if, if you just look at my, uh, my peripheral here, uh, if I have two sides, on my right side is, let's say, this is life. Uh, the spirit room on my left side is a natural room. So when you get saved, you can move between the two. Now that requires faith. Amen. Now that requires us to confess the word of God and pull things out. And I'll, I'll do I'll do a teaching on that uh, down the road. But that's how things are extracted from the spirit world. Your promotion, your health, the things you need to conquer in this life, the things you need to uh, do your assignment are all in spirit form with your name on them. This is why nobody can take was for you because God has set aside your particular plan for your particular story for you to go and get and bring it into fruition. The will of God, as you and I know, is not automatic. And I said it before in, in other settings, because if it was automatic, then uh, everybody would be saved. And you and I know everybody's not going to be saved. Amen. So again, God occupies two positions. All right. And he can see besides one side and the other. All right, Miss Glover, how you doing, man? And what God does is he gives that same power or that same ability to the believer. Now, why is that important? That's important because the blessing is something tangible that is supposed to operate in our life um, and to drive things out. Now, why did God bless mankind and then form Adam? Because when God had to recreate the world, now, let me go ahead and qualify that again. God had to recreate the world because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. Now, you can read the rest of that verse on your own, but think about that. Between verse 1 and verse 2, something happened. And in the future, I'll talk about the world that was. But there was something that happened. The date in this past where things got out of hand, and we know God had to take down the earth because Satan and his devils acted a fool, okay? So God has to recreate. Now, what does that mean? 
the earth is void and formless. So now we have to look and say, okay, now we God has recreated man. He blesses them and tell them to have dominion and to subdue it. What does that mean? Subdue is a spiritual warfare tactic or term. And God is saying, hey, I'm putting man back in place because the world that was is no longer. All right, and we'll talk about demons and devils and all fallen angels and all this stuff uh, later on as the weeks to come. But God says, I'm putting things back together and God blesses them. You and I were part of that blessing or that conversation because guess what? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse, verse number uh, 5 says that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Now, if you can picture in the theater of your mind that before we came down into our mother and out of our mother, we had a conversation with God. And God says, I've anointed you. I blessed you. I made you a prophet to the nations. He given us distinct assignments to accomplish while we're here. And then God sends us and we become a, a, a start forming in the womb and all that. And here we come years later and we grow up and be older. In attempts that God can, well, hopefully we can um, finish and complete the will of God. So what does that mean? I'm glad you asked. The blessing is for the people who God has called unto himself. He blessed everybody, but everybody does not receive it. Now, why did he create Adam? And what was Adam's assignment? Adam was given one task to till the land, make it nice and pretty. But he said, do not eat the fruit of the tree because the day you do, you shall surely die. In that particular verse, uh, God said, hey, in, in chapter two, hey, if you eat this fruit, you're going to die. And that's the first time death is entered or mentioned in the Bible. But death had no power until Adam disobeyed. So that means that he was operating in the blessing as long as he was in obedience to what God told him to do. And whenever Adam went down and he ate that fruit, he got in trouble. That's the same thing that happens to us. Sometimes there's things that are forbidden. God said, don't touch that stuff because you get in trouble. You'll surely die. And we do it. You know, and but thank God for grace. Amen. You heard last Sunday's sermon. Amen. Now, what was Adam's assignment? Adam's assignment was to extend the blessing upon the face of the earth. That was what he's supposed to do. He, because beyond the garden of Eden was thorns, thistles, and you can read this out in Genesis, and it was unformed. And God gave him the assignment to work his plan, to work that thing, and then he was able to, um, was supposed to extend that thing. But you and I know he took a different route, got cursed, the snake got cursed, and all the above, and so that blessing was lost. So what does God do? He comes in into number six and he tells Aaron the priest at the time. And Aaron in that particular thing is a authority figure and he's restoring the blessing back to the people of Israel. Now, if you turn to Numbers chapter six, and this is a Bible study, so guess what? You will learn a lot today. And and this is what it said, uh, verse 22. All right, Numbers chapter six, verse 22. This is where the blessing is learned and the blessing is commanded. Hey, Ms. Ms. Simpson, good evening. It says this right here. Uh, I'll start in 22. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, the one in authority, speak unto Aaron, who is a type and foreshadow of somebody who was a priestly nature and in authority, and, and say unto and, and his sons and saying, Oh, this, I want King James to trip me out. Oh, this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, say unto them, verse 24, the Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And I shall put my name upon them, the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now, in Jewish culture, they do this very thing. Amen. They have not stopped doing this. When that child turns 13, they command the blessing over their particular child, son or daughter, doesn't matter. But this thing is available to every person that can believe it. Now, if you go through the Old Testament into the New, you will see this principle in operation. Now, Isaac blessed Jacob and every word came to pass. Jacob blessed his 12 sons and every word came to pass. So if it's important for us to bless our children or to receive or extend the blessing, that has been a lost practice of the church because it's not understood. But if you go into the New Testament, 
the first thing Jesus does with his disciples is that he blesses them and he starts saying, you are the salt of the earth. You are this and that. And they were anything but that. You and I know Peter was a crook. Uh, Matthew was a swindler. Uh, James and John had schizophrenia, all the above, but the Lord and God was showing us that no matter what it looks like, when you command the blessing of the Lord upon the children, upon those who are your son or daughter, those you have authority over, that blessing is extended and it's imparted. Now, it's important to bless. Now, why is this important? Because Jesus, the first thing he did was bless his team. Amen. And then the last thing he did, according to Luke 24, was he said, I led him out as far as Bethany and I was lifting on high. And he said, be blessed. So if the first thing God does in Jesus form and the last thing he does is bless the people that helped him. Why don't we do it? So there is a spiritual law in motion about this blessing. Amen. So here's a key point, class. When you understand one as authority figure, that when you bless your those under your authority, you can pronounce number six, the blessing verbatim. I'll tell you guys to bless my kids. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord uh, shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you his peace. And anything after that that I say as the one in authority over my children, including my wife, amen, uh, I am put a demand on heaven that it will come to pass. Now that blessing cannot be reverse except through disobedience. Amen. So you have the power to command the blessing over your own seed, over your wife. I mean, man of God, if you have a man of God above you that, that is an authority and he commands the blessing, it cannot be reversed. I'm telling you, the reason why I'm standing here and the reason why there's been great success in my life, and I'm not tooting my horn, is because the man of God who had the blessing commanded upon me because up until that point, nobody had done that. Amen for my life. So I took the same practice of my own children and over their life I watched the blessing manifest in many forms. Now what is the blessing defined? The blessing is the supernatural power of God upon a person's life so they can have health, healing, restoration, a good, good, good report, all the above. It's an impartation into somebody because it's important for God to attach his stigma on somebody that says that person is blessed. Now, that's why you see certain people go fast in the things of God and some people are slow in the things of God because they need somebody in authority to command the blessing. Now, if you are a family and you have a, a, a husband and a wife, a mother, father in the house, that's great. If you are a mother and you don't have a man at the moment, you're still the one in authority. It, it wasn't gender specific. It was saying that one in authority can command the blessing over that which belongs to them. So if you are an authority figure, take this to heart that you can command the blessing over your children, over your finances, over things that pertain unto you, and you will see a change come into them drastically. You will see them go into places and do things. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that my kid had that in them. But think about what I said five minutes ago, that Jesus blessed the disciples when they were schizophrenic, bipolar, crazy, stealing from people, and all the above. He called them the salt of the earth. You will be a blessed people of measure. And this is the Lord releasing the blessing over people who do not look like the blessing. So I'm telling you tonight, if you have those under your care, who do not look like the blessing, command the blessing. And over time, you will see the blessing start to manifest in their life. And do it often. My, both my twins who are older are 19, and they've been getting that stuff since they were like three. Amen. Now I got my other three kids, and they get the same impartation. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord reminded me. I was praying last Friday morning because I was off. Amen. Thank God for being off. Amen. And I was praying over my youngest son. And I, the Lord said, put some of your honor on him. So I did that because Moses was commanded to put some of his honor on, on Joshua. So I took some of my honor, the blessing, and put it on him. And I felt the power of God come out of me and go into him. Because guess what? There's greatness attached to that young man's life. And when God gives a command like that, like he's doing tonight, he wants you to command the blessing over the child or over the situation. Now, we have been taught. Inverse of that, how to curse the children. 
Amen. You're no good. You're not going to do this. And that's because of ignorance. All right. That's because um, certain circles and certain cultures were just ignorant. You know, if you've been called stupid or crazy, that stuff manifests over time because people didn't know. But the one in authority, if he saved or she saved or not, those words will carry weight into that situation and into that child. So I tell men when I do talk with them and counsel them when that time comes, and I say, if you keep commanding your wife to be a battle axe, she's going to be a battle axe. But if you command she's going to be an angel, she's going to be an angel. So you choose, you can command the blessing or you can command the battle axe. Which side, life or death, which one are you going to choose? Because our words have weight. Now, when we go through all that, excuse me, I need some water. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> When we go through all that, we have an understanding that we have more authority than we let off the beat. We have authority to change situations because the blessing does not stop. You command the blessing, husband and wife, you get together and you command the blessing come upon your union, come upon all that pertains unto you. And I guarantee you that God will open the heaven even the wider to where you will be able to do exploits and you will see an acceleration come into the spirit. And I just want to prophesy real quick because you just flashed before me. Alex, man of God, I was going to call you, but God said, release it now. Sir, you are getting ready to experience 2022 is your year of acceleration. I see something happen to you on your job where you're going to have a suddenly. You know how Joseph was bought from the prison and to the palace? I see something happening in your future. Give me 90 days, the Lord said, and something in your future, I'm talking about your situation right now, where you will come the boss and not the one who has to listen to the boss. Amen. Because God has found you faithful in what you have been doing. And God said there is a fresh anointing. And you're going to have to get, prepare yourself, get, get ready, the Lord says, because you're going to have to prepare yourself to come with him because he's going to take you on a journey because the assignment that he has given to you has not stopped. And God said you're going to find yourself coming into the company of two great men who are going to help you and get you what you need to do. And all they want to do is bless and be a blessing as a matter in fact, it, one of them will be an underwriter, amen, an underwriter to make sure that you get started on your way. The devil tried to put you in a situation or a circle that was not the will of God, but I see God shutting that thing down. I just saw a door close, not because you did anything wrong, but because what's on your life is something grand. It's unique. God uses you, man of God, in a unique and unusual way, and those visitations are from him. Your dreams are not sporadic, and you should be paying attention and documenting your dreams because the Lord is visiting you more and more as time progresses because there is such an apostolic weight on your shoulders. You can't shake it. You can't get rid of it. And there's an uneasiness because God is calling you to the next level of leadership. And that's going to be a blessing to not only you, but unto your wife. I see tag team. I see power coming out of you. I see things coming out of you, Todd. And you have to write the book because nobody is going to believe your story. God said, write the book, Liz, because nobody is going to believe what you have been through. Your book will set women free. And God said, don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about uh, who, who is not being buzzed out because God's going to take it. Once you complete it, God says he's going to blow on it. And that's going to bring a blessing unto you and to your family that will be a perpetual blessing that will go down to your children. And I just saw your daughter come before me. That young lady is blessed. My God in heaven. You watch how God uses her even in a young age. And I see the angels of God around her even in her school right now. They stand post around that girl. No evil shall befall her. Neither any plague come not her dwelling. Because God has made a covenant with that young lady. Because if you know it or not, at nighttime she talks to God just like a little child would. Because she believes that he's real. And God's going to use her. That's why she's so sensitive to the spirit thing. Because she knows that there is a real God because of what you've done. And God said because you have been faithful to teach this young lady and to teach your family about the ways of God. He said, recompense, 2022 will be the best year that your family has experienced. Amen. So God bless you on that, Alex and Liz. My God, God just put you before me. And when I know that as a prophet, when God does it, we just go with it. Amen. The Lord is kind. Mm -mm -mm. I might as well start keep prophesying now. I'm already, I'm already here now. Ain't that right, honey? <laughs> my, wife, my wife over there uh, throwing up holy hands. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Miss Paulette Parker, God bless you, woman of God. 
I see the enemy trying to come at you in many forms of fashion. My God, almost like they have tried to put chains around you because of what you carry. God wants me to tell you, and I just heard him in my right ear, that there is weight in your mouth. God said that your words carry so much weight that you have the power to open and shut. I'm looking back. I'm, I'm going back to the 1700s, the 1800s. Your family was known as being a family of justice. And your family was known of having what to say and how to say. And God says that mantle had got lost in the shuffle over time. But because you've been obedient and because you come into the things of God, God is now, even as I'm prophesying to you, God is mantling you with the power to change things. Now, that is a grace upon you that has been lost in your family, but God has just put that back on you with a double uh, portion anointing. You're going to have the ability now, almost like a, a, um, a superhero, I'll, I'll leave it at that, that I see you with a mantle on in the spirit. You're going to be able to talk to things and tell things to open, and the doors will be open, and doors will be shut. And God says, whatever you bind in this next season, Whatever you bind, God says he'll bind it. And whatever you loose in this next season, God says he will loose in this season. God said that's such a weight coming out of you. My God, almost like people have written you off like you don't even have uh, uh, anything to say. They've written you off like you don't have any anointing. And But God said those are the ones that I choose. And God said even before you were born, you and him had that conversation that God will use you mighty in the earth. You're going to find yourself in the next 12 months. Your life is about to change for the better. God says he's going to open doors for you. Matter of fact, the doors are already open. They're set before you. You're going to get a phone call within the next four 42 days, mark my words, God's prophet. In the next 42 days, you are going to get a phone call that's going to bless and cancel a lot of things that have been messing with you. It'll bless you in a way where you can move somewhere else and cancel things that have been tempering and, ha and hampering you. Hampering, amen. My God, it's all coming so fast, so you have to keep on me, amen. The Lord is so kind. God bless you. Hey, Miss Faith Simpson, you woman of God, you are blessed beyond measure. That prophetic blessing that I talked about earlier is so far upon you that God says he's going to make up for the years that the canker worm, the locusts have eaten. God says because of what things that you had no control over. I see the enemy coming at you. Matter of fact, the years of the 90s, he came at you hard in the 90s because of what you carried. Because um, uh, the things you, you, the weight and, and the type of stuff that you have on you. God said in the 90s, the devil came at you hard. And the devil has tried to put you in chains and ever since then, so you will not get free. As a matter of fact, I see a team of devils circling your house. As a matter of fact, they're circling your house trying to say seances so you don't uh, get past what you want to. But as God's prophet, my God in heaven, this is why you need to know one. I see the witch with your name trying to bury it. So I, I understand what God has said. He said this day. What the witch has to create over you is broken in Jesus' name. You're going to find yourself, this will be a great year of recompense for you. You're going to find yourself, I'm telling you what I know, what I'm seeing in the spirit. You're going to find yourself so blessed, my God. And God says, you'll know it's him because the blessing was going to come from sources that you hadn't heard from in years. There is an error that happened. In the system concerning paperwork, and it's something that someone made a clerical error that cost you some money. So, God, I release her recompense unto her. And God said, I am fixing that thing because the power of that witch has been broken off the life. In the name of Jesus, woman of God, 2022 is going to be your year, Miss Simpson. You watch what God do. You watch what he do for you. Matter of fact, you're going to see so much changes. You're going to, I see you sitting at a table weeping before God because of his kindness. I see you weeping before God saying, what did I do to deserve all this? What did I do? And you're going to, God's going to say that you were his daughter. You've been his daughter. God said, Isaiah 46, he promised that he would carry us even to the day of our last breath. And God says that is a reality. So there is great recompense for you, woman of God, for 2022 will be your year of great restoration. The devil is a liar. And God has told me to tell you that. The devil is a liar. Watch what he does. He's going to make a spectacle of him for what he did. Recompense is your portion. Amen. Now I know Aaron on here. Hey Aaron. <laughs> Aaron is a, is a close uh, a mentee of mine. Uh, a bright future ahead of him. Hold on one second. Let me let me sip this, uh, this blessed water called the sunny. Amen. <laughs> Aaron, I just heard the Lord in my spirit. He says that your acceleration 
begins now. You've been asking God about when. You've been asking God about what to do. You've been asking God about the plans of your future. And God says, now, son, is acceleration time. Because there's some things the devil has stolen from your bloodline, especially the males. I'm looking at your father's house, and I'm going back into the path, and God is taking me. And literally, I'm seeing the trap of hell trying to circumvent and undercut uh, what they were trying to do. That's why you have the mind you have, because it's always been the will of God for your family to have their own stuff. But I'm going back, way back, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going back before we, you and I were born, and I see a business deal that went wrong. And the person that was affected was a family member. And the person that did the affected said, this family will never go forth. And that curse has followed that family. But tonight, young man, that thing is broken off you and broken off your family. And God said, get ready because there is acceleration. That's going to be your portion. People will not recognize you in the next 24 months. Give God 24 months and watch what you become. God says, you're going to be a powerful man of God in the spirit and in the natural. You're going to have dreams and visions and you'll prophesy with great accuracy and great uh, fire. And God said, he's going to use your mouth to change the dynamic of things happen to your family. And he's going to use you not only uh, in, in an entrepreneur in the marketplace, but he's going to use you in a church house to make a decree and it shall be established. But God said, get ready and go through your training. My God in heaven, because you know how to understand, you recognize, you think it's just something about you when you recognize real and you recognize fake. That's called a spirit of discernment. It's followed the many of family, but they never knew how to use it or they never knew how to put language to it. God said you will know when there is a bad business deal coming your way because he'll forewarn you and before you even try to sign something that's not the will of God, the sermon will come up upon you and God will say no and God says be careful about who comes around you when you are starting to make it. When your acceleration comes here, you have to be careful because I see people trying to attach themselves from hell to what God's going to do for you and what God said he's going to do for you is not for everybody because because there's something special about you, son, <laughs> says the spirit of the Lord. Amen. You're so kind. The Lord is good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. One day I'm going to have my wife prop sign up here. Stay tuned. She laughing, but I'm being serious. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is kind. So I'm going through here and I'm going to see um, who the Lord is wanting to talk to. Amen. Amen. I know my, my my sister in love is on here. Amen. Miss Miss uh Nikki. God bless you, woman of God. I know I oh my God. I see it. You know, um <laughs> how can I say this? I almost saw like a um I almost saw like what's that thing, honey? That thing that that uh that turn you can turn around and dance to. You know what I'm talking about, honey? Renee. Renee. Renee, <laughs> you know that thing that you can turn around and dance to? What's it called? You, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're dancing, the thing goes around you like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, what's it called? You don't know? Anyway, Nikki, amen. Um, this is your turnaround year. I know you're waiting on prophecies to come to pass. And God said those are sure, those will surely come to pass. But there is a turnaround for you. Not that you've done anything bad, not that. But there is things that you desire to happen. And God says, you're going to find yourself and believe the word of the Lord. 45 days, and that's the number that came before me. 45 days, you're going to find yourself in a room full of great men and women. And God's going to give you the option to take ye or to take they. And God says, it'll be your choice because he's well pleased with you. I see God, my God of heaven. You know how God has a... Um, God has no favors, but he does uh, uh, favor the favorable. And there's so much favor upon your life that when you walk into a room, it could be a, a dark atmosphere in spiritually, but just your presence alone brings a calmness and a peace to you. The people have been watching you that you work with because they speak uh, pleasant of you. There's people that say, man, she is a, a great woman of God. She's a great worker. And God said, because you carry his spirit and people know it. And God said, it's almost like um, you're being you have like the, uh, the secret service of heaven around you. So anywhere you go, you have angels around you. And God is saying that he wants you to put your angels to work. You have two assigned to you right now who are, who are supposed to get, matter of fact, they're both angels of acquisition. 
There's two assigned. I'm, I'm looking at you in the spirit. There's two angels assigned to you, and that both on their chest says acquisition. So God has said, you give them something to do. If you need them to bring you this or to get that for you or something for your family member, God says, send them out, and they'll go and do it at, at what you command them to do. You have authority. There's so much authority on you, sister. My God, God says because of your heart and because of your, your, your desire to serve and because of your faithfulness, God has given you authority and you don't even have to have the title. This is authority from God where you can also open and shut things. And if something's going uh, uh, not the way you want it, God says you have, he has given you the power to change things by the spoken word out of your mouth. Get ready, woman of God, 45 days and you can mark the word of the prophet. 45 days from this day, from 45 days, later, you're going to find yourself again in a room with great men and women. And it's all, almost going to be like, what do I do to deserve this? And don't believe the lie of hell that said you're not worthy, you're not qualified, you not, you can't get this. Don't believe that because only God does that. God qualifies the call. He don't call the qualified. Amen. God bless you, sister. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it's all over you and your family. My God in heaven. And you're going to see great recompense in that arena. I, and we know this. I, I know my nephews. Amen. But these young men have such a grace upon them to do great exploits. And I know one of them is on, on his way to millionaire status. I know the other one is on his way to millionaire status. But out of their loins, my God in heaven, it's going to be children who are blessed beyond measure. You're going to be a grandmother at, in, when that time comes, but I see you in an older age, uh, still glowing with the glow of God. But you're going to be smiling from ear to ear because of what the Lord has done. And he has promised you. He said you will see those kids raised up. And it's because of your heart, because of your sacrifice. God said the children of the righteous shall be and is be and will be blessed. So you receive, woman of God, because there is great recompense. There is such an anointing coming upon you to do even ministry. My God in heaven, it's been your time, but the devil is trying to put you in the back as if you only have one, one, one talent. But God says he's calling you by name. I hear him say, Tanika, come forth. And I see you coming out, my God, and going in. My God, you're going to go into a place. Or, I'm telling you, I, I know what you do because I'm, I'm related, but I see you in a place of, of great influence, and you think it's, it's just beginning now, and even the books inside of you, God said he's placed books inside of you, children's books, where you're going to be able to encourage kids and do things like that, and he said that's such a scribe anointing upon you because you have the mind of the ready writer, and God says I'm shrinking that mantle upon you now because we are waiting, the earth is waiting for those things to be written, and God says when you produce the first one, it'll produce three, and it produced nine. I just saw you, my God. I just saw you sitting on a news set talking about your book and people coming, bringing orders in. It's going to overtake you so much. And you too will be one that weeks and say, God, what did I do to deserve all this? And God sends you tonight because of your heart, my God in heaven, because of your desire to serve him. God says he's going to make it come to pass and he's bringing it to pass concerning your life and concerning the ministry that's inside of you. God's going to pull that ministry right out of you. My God, because you're so humble about the things of God, God can use you. He's going to pull that thing out. I'm talking about he's not going to push it out. He's going to pull it out. And that's going to be, he, my God in heaven, I see you teaching women how to be modest, how to be ladies, how to have etiquette. I see you teaching them how to carry themselves and how to do things right, how to be God's woman in a time like this. God said you're going to bring back pureness to young ladies. And young ladies will sit at your feet and they will learn from you. Even the Bible says the older will teach the young Younger. That grace is upon you right now, woman of God. So receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh my God. That was heavy. Woo! My God in heaven. <laughs> now, if y'all don't know Tanika, that's my sister in love. Uh, I'm married to her beautiful sister, Miss Renee. Amen. So we we are family. My God in heaven. Hey Tam, you will get one too. I see you. Mm. Because you just popped up before me. I didn't know you were home. Hey, Tam. <laughs> God bless you, sister-in-law. My other one. Um, Tam, I see God giving you rest. My God in heaven. I see God coming down and just strengthening what remains. And I see God adding to what remains. God said that the enemy has tried to bring uh, stress upon you, even to the point where, um, and guess what? Ain't nobody told me nothing. Even to the point where, 
I see a hospital room. The devil is trying to take you out of here by putting more on you than you can bear. But on this night, we break the power of hell and we say, not so. Amen. And what God's going to do, because he is trying to come against you, God says he's going to even blow on what you put you put in your hands to. In Psalms chapter 1, it talks about whatever you put your hands to, it will prosper. So God is decreeing that over you tonight. Whatever you put your hands to, it shall prosper and it will not fail. God said he wants you to go and revisit your blueprint, revisit your business plan and expand it. He said, I'm giving you a blank check and if you can believe it, he will do it for you. It's almost, a, oh my God. God said, don't limit him in this because God said, upon you is the blessing of the Lord. It was, it was matter of fact, it was a mantle that came across your family. And God said, it's dropping on you. And not only will it drop on you, it's going to drop on your seed. Amen. My God in heaven. It's going to drop down to the generations to come. And God says, watch what he does. Matter of fact, this is a great, the devil has stole from you in the last 15 years. I see the early 2000s as a rough time for you. My God. But God says, I will restore the years that canker worm and the locusts have eaten. And God said, give me this year. God said, dedicate this year to me. And God said, I will restore everything that you lost. I see money that was taken from you. Illegitimately, money that was taken from you. But God says, great recompense shall be your portion. On this year, you're going to find yourself getting checks upon checks, business offers upon business offers. Your thing is about to get busy, woman of God. So you're going to have to get ready because God says, on tonight, he's blowing on your stuff. And you're going to be so busy, you're going to have to hire some people to help you. And God said, the people that you hire to help you, check their character because you need people around you that you can trust. And he said, sometimes family is not trustable. But go forth in the things of God because God is going to do great for you and not only for you, but for your family in the name of Jesus. And my God, my brother, <laughs> it must be family night, my brother-in-law, your husband, just came before me. My God, there is something great getting ready to take place in his life. Because he's giving God a yes. You tell Aaron, the, the prophet, speaking about us of the Holy Ghost, the prophet is telling him on oh, tonight, not the brother-in-law, the prophet is telling him on oh, tonight that he too, God is pulling ministry out of him. No longer, he's going to find himself outside that camera to a place of ministry. God has called him to a place. That's why he can't sleep. That's why he's uneasy. It's not the external things. It's the Holy Ghost staring at him, talking to him, motivating him because God's going to pull that thing right out of him so strongly it's going to shake the foundation even of his own core, but because he's given God a yes. And God said, 36 months, watch, he will not be the same man. He will be a powerful man of God. He will teach God's own passion. He will love people, and he will show them the way unto salvation. There's such a grace upon him. He knows how to win people naturally, but now God's going to blow him supernaturally to win the lost and to get those back in church who have said church is dead, but God's going to use him like a lifeline to bring life in the young men and to old men, and he's going to be a mentor to many. I see him even going to the Marines was all a strategic plan by God so we can learn leadership, so we can learn all types of things, and those skills were never lost, and God said, man of God, you're going to come forth, and God said, put your VA stuff in the system. God, oh my God in heaven, there is a hold up for you, and God said, he's waiting on you to press enter, and once you press enter, he said, great recompense will come upon you, and you don't have to worry about the devil taking it. He said, it's for you in the name of Jesus. It is so, and it shall not be otherwise. Whew, my God in heaven. It is so. I got to drink this water. Mm -hmm. My God in heaven. <laughs> my wife's over here sticking at me. You probably can hear him in the background. Amen. The Lord is so kind. The Lord is so kind. Amen. Hey, Mr. Wanna Hayes, I don't, uh, I think my name, you know Mr. Wanna Hayes? Yes. Amen. Okay, I don't know you, but my beautiful wife knows you. Amen. The Lord will say unto you, woman of God, I see the enemy try to come against you, even on last year and the year before that. But I see the enemy almost like he was trying to stop you from achieving some goals that you had written down and upon your heart and things that you wanted to do. And God says, there is coming upon you such a grace of the finisher. 
My God, I don't know if you have a whole lot of projects that need to get accomplished, but God said the grace of a finisher is coming upon you. And what's going to happen, Miss Hayes, is God's going to go back and he is looking at things that the hell has stolen from you. Not because you did anything wrong. Remember that. Not because you did anything wrong. It's because hell hates who you are. And what God says he's going to do, he's going to blow on old dreams. That He put those dreams in your heart. And the devil has been telling you that they're too big and God won't do it. Because what the devil's been doing, my God, a demon called regret has come into your life. Not because you summoned it, but it was sent by somebody who demonized. My God in heaven. Somebody who was against you. I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but somebody was cursing your name behind your back and they took those words and tried to stop what you were trying to do but God said on this day on this day a divine reversal is coming to your life just like Ezekiel said in chapter 8 a will in a will the devil's trying to turn you one way but God's going to turn you the other way and God says watch what he does even in your dream life even on tonight will be a powerful dream from heaven almost as if you're living right now but it will be a dream that God he's restoring a dream unto you because God says you are a dreamer and God says, you have the dreamer's anointing, a dreamer of dreams anointing. And there's such a prophetic grace upon your life that you can see and know, but you don't always say because there's no language for it. But God says that you have a seeing and knowing grace from heaven. And this is why you dream the way you do. And the dream snatcher and the dream catcher has been after you since you were a little girl because you dreamed about the future. God has taken you there, but we bind the dream snatcher and we bind the dream catcher in the name of Jesus. And we open the heavens, even the wider. So God, download the her and visit. There is a great visitation come upon you. In the, in the next two weeks, you're going to find a great visitation from the Lord upon your life. But God says that you um, you are not behind schedule. God said he knew this day would come, and you are right on schedule. And God says, watch what he does for you. <laughs> I see God, my God in heaven. I even see God. I don't know what you do for a living. I don't think I mentioned I don't know how to, honey. Okay, I have, I have to ask because we, we all live in the same place at one point. Um, I don't know what you do for a living. But I see God coming down to even visit that on your behalf. I see the Lord high and lifted up at the workplace. I don't know what you do, but what God knows is you always kept your heart in a place of being postured before him where he's high and lifted up. And because you have set the atmosphere, God said, great promotion is your portion. My God, great promotion is your portion. I, I see, matter of fact, I almost see there's some quarreling going on. Not, not about you, but there's some quarreling in the spirit. The devils don't want, they are afraid of you, woman of God. They are afraid of you. He said, they're saying if she gets, I'm, I'm listening to that conversation, if she gets a revelation of who she is in the spirit, we're in trouble. So they have spent years upon years attacking your mind, doubting God, trying to get you to doubt God. And I doubt the assignment, but God says, not so, woman of God. He's restoring those dreams back to you. That you can go forth in faith to do what God has called you to do upon this land. My God in heaven, I'm telling you, woman of God, Miss Hayes, that you're going to go forth in such power. People are not going to recognize you. Give God 12 months. People are not going to recognize you. Things are going to come into your life where you're like, where did all this come from? God is restoring the blessing of the Lord, making it rich, and he's putting it on you. My God. God, and it asks no sorrow. I don't know. I keep having this option that there was a wicked man before. My God, I don't know. You have to tell me that. There was a, a wicked man. And God says the curses of that man shall not go anywhere. God said they'll return. Just like a saw through a javelin. That's what it is. I see a wicked man throwing a javelin at you. But God said on this day, return the sender. That same javelin that was thrown at you, God said he has sent it back to hell from where it came. And God said because you do not lose the faith in him, you do not quit on your assignment, God says watch how I raise you up. It was all designed to take you down. Restoration. That's right, Ms. Parker. Restoration is your portion. Restoration into the future. God has a future for you. God has a future for you. He always had a future. And that's why the devil attacks you in the mind and attacks you in the dream mind so that you will not get to it. I'm telling you, woman of God, you get ready. 
You get ready to what God is going to do. God is going to show himself to you this year. 2022 it will be the best year, and I decree this. 2022 will be the best year that you ever had to date. Watch what I tell you. Restoration. People won't recognize you in 2023 because what God is doing in your life and those around you. My God in heaven, you are blessed. I decree it over you that you are blessed. I decree over you, my God of heaven, that the same blessing that's on me, it gets on you. My God of heaven, the doors open just like that. People help you just like that. Promotion is yours just like that. Money coming just like that. It will be the best year for you. It's the best year in the name of Jesus. My God in heaven. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Woo. The prophets on here, y'all know how this go. God uses you. The Lord is so kind. Get ready, Miss Tina Glover. My God in heaven. God says that your grandchild <laughs> is going to be such a blessing unto you and your family. And God said, not only that, but there's more grandchildren I'm looking at. My God. He said all of them. He said the obedience of one person to come to God has been the blessing upon the family. So your grandchildren, I don't know why I'm going here. This is what God is showing me. Your grandchildren shall not fall into old things that the bloodlines may have done. God says because of what? Your faithfulness, God says, the seed of the righteous shall be blessed. And God says, get ready, woman of God, because there is a, I don't even know, it's a, um, it's almost like God is giving you a, 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 a total makeover. I see you in 24 months looking like somebody who is strong in spirit and powerful in the things of God. God said he is accelerating you in spirit because people have written you off. But God says your desire to serve and your heart has qualified you for the advancement and accelerated grace upon your life. God says get ready, study, do what you have to do because in two years time, there's going to be a great revealing coming to you. I'm talking about where people don't know your name, but they will. And because God's going to call your name from the back to the front. And you're going to teach God's word with power and authority. And I see God using you not only in this region, but also in the Northeast. I know you're from Boston, but I see God when you go back home. I see you being a witness to those that you grew up with and those around you. And I see your, the address of your family changing to much better addresses. I see because the blessing that's on you is extending to your family. It's almost like you you are the, the, the Joseph of the family, but they're going to be able to come to Goshen and be blessed in there with you. My God in heaven, I see God doing this so fast for you because God's going to prove to you and prove to the haters that counts you out, but he is still on the throne and he has not taken a break from what he does. God is so proud of you and God is in love with you. He told me to tell you there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. God is in love with you. He loved you first. God is going to use you in such a powerful way. My God, is, I, can't get, I can't get away from that because God's going to use you in such a powerful way. Again, it's going to shock people. But it's not only going to shock people, people are going to come to know the Lord because of what you're talking about and the fire of God upon your mantle. I see God bring and put a mantle of fire upon you to go and burn down dead things and to bring things to life. And you too have the power to bind and lose out of your mouth because God loves you, woman of God. No condemnation. You see what God do. I even see this stuff happen quickly. I ain't talking about it's going to happen six, seven months. Receive the word. I see this happen so fast for you and your family that it's going to shake the foundation of hell because hell had a plan to bind the whole family. That was the plan of hell. But you got loose. Loose her and let her go. And that's what happened because you gave God a yes. He took off the filthy rags and put upon you a new coat, a new garment of love. And people may not see it in the spirit realm, but when you walk around, there's such a grace and a weight that comes with you. And even the devils know that there's a grace and a weight upon you. And you walk around almost like a coat of many colors because that's the love of God that you walk around with. And watch what God do for you and yours. Amen. Amen. Mm -mm. My God in heaven, my God, the Lord is so kind. Hey, Miss Miss Gordine, how you doing, ma'am? It's good to see you on here. God bless you, woman of God. 
My God, woo, my God! I got a word for you. It's, it's coming to me in, in pictures and and um in, in my ears. God says he, on this day, He crowns you with a new crown. The devil has counted you out, and some people around you have counted you out. The devil has even tried to kill you several times. I'm going back to when you were young. I see the plan of hell to take you out of here because hell is almost trying to stifle your calling. And even now, God says, I kept you because there's work for you to do. It's almost as if you, you carry a mantle of wisdom and you're not, you don't say much about it, but you can see and you can know what's going on. God says, get ready because there is coming upon you almost like a catapult in the spirit. And I see God, my God, I see God doing some things uh, concerning your health and that of your husband where you can, um, uh, your life has been extended, says God. Because there are things for you to do. He has kept you. There are things for you to do. And God said the devil has been lying to you, saying that God is not going to use you. But the devil and his cohorts are all liars. God says even now, the stuff that you have lost over your time, the stuff that made no sense, God says get ready. 24 months, it's a great recompense coming to your home. And that of your husband, I keep seeing your husband coming for me. Tell Pop Gordon, I said, huh, I keep seeing him coming for me. I see great restoration around him. Your family is so blessed because of how you raised them. I see my God in heaven. I see even him, God using him in a mighty way. God has not, your assignments have not done. God says, your assignment is just beginning. So God says, reposition yourself because your assignments are just beginning. Beginning, Even in this age, the devil has lied and said it's over. It is not over. Now, it is your time now. Now is your time, says the Spirit of God. And I, keep, I don't know how I keep seeing Pop laughing and folding his hands and having a good, good time. You tell the man of God, the joy of the Lord is his strength. My God of heaven, and God will put on the garment of praise to tear off the spirit of heaviness. I see the devils trying to mantle the man of God full of heaviness. But God says the garment of praise is coming down to him now. Tell him to dance like David danced. Because when he danced like David danced, he'll take off years that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten from him. And God says he'll bring it to a full story, full restoration. But God wants the man of God to dance like David danced in spite of. Because God says if he does it in faith, hear the word of the Lord. If he does it in faith, God said, watch in the next 22 days what happened to the man of God. The thing that he lost will be restored 10 times over. My God in heaven, you are blessed, Miss Gordine and Pop Gordine. You guys are blessed all the times that you have blessed me and my family with cabins, greens, and corn, and all the stuff you always bought to the church for me. May God, because you fed the prophet like a raven, now God said, let me feed you. Dance like David, dance, man of God. Watch what God do for your, my God, watch what God do for your family. Because of your obedience, watch what he does. It's going to shock the world. It's going to shock even all of us. And say, what in God's name? You will see with restoration this year. Restoration. Watch the phone call coming. Watch the phone call coming. I see the devil trying to tie up something that pertains unto you and your husband. I see him trying to hold it so tight when you guys have been praying and even through your mind asking God, how long are we going to fight about this? But God says, oh, today it's broken and it's going to your hands now. The devil is a liar. My God, do it for the Lord. Do it in faith. That's the key right there, man of God. He says, if you will give him praise around that house, the heaviness will leave and those will break up years of things. God said, I'll take the foolish thing to confine the wise. I saw a woman of God on here a second ago. Amen. It is so. It is so. I think her last name is Gomez. Let me see, honey. Is there a Gomez in here? Let me see. I think it is. Um, you guys bear with me for a second. Yeah, Gonzalez. Hey. Okay. I got it. Thank you, babe. Hey, Amen. Miss, um, let me get your first name. Michelle. Michelle, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Amen. Um, 
There we go. Sorry about that. I see, I see you walking down the street, almost like, uh, almost like I am. You go into a business meeting. I'm trying to get what God is saying here. You know, pictures come to profit so fast, and we try to catch them in the spirit. Um, there is a position for you that has been set up by heaven. For this time, says the God, that you will go forth in power and might to do the will of God. I see God using you in such a way, Miss um, Gonzalez, that there is a, almost like, um, uh, how can I say this, honey? Uh, almost like um, a new day. There we go. A new day coming for you. I see the plan of hell. And God has been going this way all night for a reason. I see the plan of hell dating back to the 80s, to the 90s, to the 2000s. The devil has tried to stop you and your family from achieving greatness. I see business deals gone bad. I see relations gone bad. I see divorce. I see all types of calamity around the family name. But God says, because you are obedient to him, God says, I'm going to bring it to a full restoration upon your family. And I also see you, woman of God, and I don't even know, this might make sense to you. Um, I just saw you uh, almost like, you, you have a grace from, I don't even, I don't even know. Um, you're on the cover of a magazine before me. It's almost, God is putting you on display. If that makes sense. God is putting you on display. And God's going to use your life as a testimony to those who have doubted the things of God. God is going to use you in such a way that it's going to almost like shake the foundations of, of the world. I don't even say the world. I would say just your, your environment. I see you, I see, um, I don't even know, well, I see, I see like young, like young kids around you. I guess your children, I don't even know. I don't know. But I see these people following you. And it's almost like, it's almost like you have, you're like a, you are a leader. And God is saying that your leadership skills will, that's, there it is. Well, thank you. you see, the Holy Ghost will help you out. Your leadership skills will make its way to the mainstream. You're going to be called for leadership development. Now, um, this may shock you, but it's the will of God for you to train others. <laughs> I don't know if you're in a, a, a trained profession or you've ever done something like that, but it's the will of God for you to give out what you have. That's such a blessing upon your life. And matter of fact, we double, uh, we ask for a double blessing be upon your life and that of, of your family because I see you come into a, a realm of great wealth. There has been wealth held up almost like the family has been trying to get to a place, and they every time they try to they take ten steps forward, they take ten steps back. But God said, "Not anymore." God said that you will be the one to be the distribution center for your family. He says, "Give me fourteen months of your time. Get ready." Because God is going to use you in the marketplace, in the financial realm. You're going to be able to cover up things. You're going to be teaching people leadership. I see you crossing your arms like this, and God is blessing you in terms of leadership because you have to, what's in you is a leader. And oh my God, I see wicked people inspired by the devil to minimize what's inside of you. Mm -mm. Almost like people are minimizing what's inside of you, but you know there's more to it than that. God said, don't listen to them, but listen to him. God said, watch what he does. He's going to change the whole, your whole circle is about to change for the better. I see God bringing you around great men and women who will match you with grace and match you with knowledge and, and match you with, with ability and just say, hey, we'll have her do it. Hey, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like you are serving somebody, getting them coffee or, or doing this. It's going to look like that. But that's how the mantle was transferred. Because there is a great transfer from the wicked one to you. And God says, you will serve somebody who may mock God. But what's on their life in terms of their, their knowledge and ability will be transferred. And God says, I'll double it on you. And you're going to do, oh my God, you're going to do double the type of things that that person did. And you will, that's why you're in front of the magazine. Because you're sitting there because you're in a seat of authority. My God, receive the woman of God. Amen. And I know I, I need to prophesy to Miss. I've, I saw Elder Passy come before me. I know I prophesied to you, ma'am, in times past, but you have come before me uh, in a strong way. My God in heaven, uh, Elder Passy. God is so, of course, God loves you, you know that, but God is well pleased with your life. 
And God says, you don't have to worry about your life being cut short for any reason. Because God says, there's great recompense assigned to your name. And because of your faithfulness, because of your honor for his spiritual leadership, and because of your honor for him, for, for first and foremost, God says the thing that has been held up by hell, I don't even know what this is, it's something hell has held up. It's nothing you've done wrong. Somebody is holding up a package. I'm looking in the spirit room. There's a package that belongs to you. And it's almost as if this package is going to um, set you up for the remainder of this time here on earth. It's, I'm going to say this. It's almost as if, um, I say this. I'm trying to describe it. And all these things coming at me. God is saying, great restoration. He says, you have been praying and you've been chipping away. It's not anything you're not doing. God said, that's not the call. The devil doesn't want you to pray about it. But you have been making commands and making demands on the things of God concerning this package. And God said, the first time you prayed, he heard you. And that's why the warfare came against you in such an astronomical way. Because the devils were trying to discourage you. They were even trying to kill you. But God says he's preserved you so you can receive great recompense and restoration upon your life. Even now, says the Spirit of God. He says, even now, you're going to find yourself. He said, this is your time. And God says, even as you have waxed a strong in spirit, God says, your mantle is shifting to something greater. God said, now is your time. And don't believe the naysayers saying this should have happened 20 years ago. God says he's been processing you since you are a young lady for this time. So you're going to see your mantle shift in a drastic way. It's almost, it's not, no, it's almost, it's going to shock a lot of us. Because your mantle is getting shifted into a whole other realm of authority. Because of your faithfulness and because of the original call of God upon your life, the devil had to fight you in your past. He had to, to handcuff you so you would not get to where you're going. But you understood the love of God and God preserves you through, through the times. I mean, I'm looking at God preserving you over time. You are a great woman of God. You have a testimony for the women of God. You have a testimony that will even bless the men of God. Your testimony needs to get in a book because people will read your book and be inspired. God says there's such a, a scribe anointing on you as well. You have it to write. And God says, just like a ready writer with a pen, God says in the spirit realm, the pen has been sitting on your table. But God is saying tonight, pick up the pen and write that book. And he said, when you release the book, you will have the support you need. You And God said, oh, he will blow on it. And you will find yourself in the mainstream of a lot of places because of what's on the inside of you. Ah, oh, man, Elder Pat, I'm telling you, ma'am, you watch out what God's going to do. Your package, it's not on the way, it's at your doorstep. My God, that means delivered by the angels of God. So I decree, God, release that unto her hands, God. You, oh my God, I see it in front of your doorstep. I mean, it's a, you know, you know what the package is. I ain't got to get deep. You know what it is. I see it in front of the doorstep. <laughs> You're going to wake up one day and your package will be delivered. And I'm talking about one day soon. I'm not talking about a year from now. I'm talking about soon your package will be delivered by the angels of God. Delivered. It is so. It is so. And it shall not be otherwise. Amen. Well, God bless you. All right. We're going to do one more. And uh, we're going to come back. Guess we're going to promise our all of February. Because guess what? God has a plan. God has a plan for all of us. And he wants to release the word to his people. Amen. Amen. So the Lord is so kind. Um, uh, amen. 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 Let's see who we got. Who's who is the Lord highlighting? I have to go through. I'm sorry, guys. I have to go through. Um, uh, Elijah, I want you to call me. Uh, call me uh, tomorrow. I have a word for you, but I need to take it in private. Uh, just call me tomorrow. Um, 
uh, Emma King, good afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you're at. God bless you, woman of God. Miss Emma King, I see God crowning you. I don't, I'm going to do one more after this. I see God crowning you. It's almost like the devil came against you to kill you. I see a great attack upon your life. And I'm talking about this has been a consistent thing. But God says, I'm bringing full restoration to my daughter. And I see God not only changing your crown, but God, I see God putting two crowns on your head. For what you did for God in times past has come back to him. It has, it has become a sweet uh, smell unto his nostrils. You're one that give God's honor, even when you think you don't. Your thought life, you keep it in check. I see you walking down the street, and I see you in the realms of glory and the realms of authority. I also see you in a realm of knowing. You dream a lot, and I see God coming to you in your dreams. Woman of God, I see God coming to you in your dreams because the devil has told you that God has forgotten about you. But God has not forgotten about you. The devil's trying to lie to you through certain people. I don't know who this is around you, but somebody around you is not for you. Matter of fact, they're jealous of you. And what God's going to do, because of his love for you, he's going to expose the snake. Actually, two snakes. I see two of them. There's two snakes around you. They smile in your face, but they're actually leeches in the dark. They're trying to take you down because of your heart of gold. But God says, on this day, the snake's head has been cut off. And God said, what was lost, God says, I am restoring to a full end. You're going to find yourself, ma'am, it's almost like before the year ends, having a great time of restoration upon you and your family. Matter of fact, those are prophesied to those on the live tonight. God is restoring everything back to you if you can receive it. God has opened the heavens wide upon those tonight. That was my instruction, to open the heavens wide upon those tonight. And God is restoring things back to you. I see, my God, I, I'm going back in the king. I'm in the corporate flow now. I see God putting together relationships. I see daughters and sons who haven't talked to mothers in years. I see God breaking that devil. I see God doing new things in marriage, those who want to stay married, those who are married, and those who desire to be married. I see God bringing a real man, a real woman of God to your comfort because God said, you don't have to be alone if you don't want to. I see God bringing that to, to those up, uh, on a live night and it won't be a time of stress, struggle, and strain, but it will be a time of joy, happiness, and going forth in God's name. I see God uh, going into a place almost like, um, my God, Miss uh, Marcia, hold on, I got you. You just you just popped for me. I think you'll be my last one after I get Emma King. Um, I see God going into homes, and I, I just see, like, the furniture out of place. But I see the hand of God in the home rearranging furniture. Some of us on this live tonight, we are being rearranged by the Holy Ghost. Not for anything bad, but for our next. I hear God giving us our next steps. So those who are believing God, what do you want me to do, God? What is my calling? What is my purpose? Stay tuned and prepare because God is going to reveal the next steps unto you. Just watch what he does. Some of you have, um, you have a genuine heart for God. And he knows that. And he's in love with you. But he wants you to do the will of God, whatever your calling is. So God is bringing clarity on tonight. Those on the line, those who watch it later on, God is bringing clarity unto you about what to do. Matter of fact, he's going to put so much clarity upon you, he's going to make sure you don't miss it. Because you're going to get frustrated in a thing that God's called you to. That's how you know it's God, because you're so frustrated about it. And you know that's the Holy Ghost staring you up. And watch what God does. Watch what he does for your life. I'm telling you, this year, saints, is this is the year of not only great restoration, but great, uh, uh, how do you say this, uh, reorganization. There's things around us that hell has placed around us. Relationships sent by hell. I see God exposing uh, snakes around you. I see God, matter of fact, 
The reason why God is exposing snakes in this season is because those on the live tonight, under the sound of my voice, you have stayed close to the fire. And whenever you stay close to the fire, the snakes come out. Ask Paul in chapter 28 of Acts. That when he got close to the fire, the snake came out. Because you're close to the fire, watch what God does. All the snakes around you, I'm talking about snakes in your neighborhood, just people who call themselves friends, God is showing it. I see a whole reversal of doomsday they have planned. The hell had planned for some of those on the line tonight. Doomsday, but it's going to be a joyous day, says the Lord uh, of hosts. My God, Emma King, back to you. I see God using you. This whole snake thing. I don't know what you do, woman of God, but you started this. Amen. I see God restoring to you the years. That's been a theme tonight. The canker worm has eaten. I even see a relationship that, sh that was strained. It's almost as if Hell, no, no, it is a it, hell set this strain up so you will not have the peace of God in your heart because the devils want you to have anxiety about it so you can leave this earth prematurely. But God is coming in tonight to cancel that demonic trap that hell has tried to put in your place. God says, watch what he does. You're going you're gonna to know us him because the phone call that you've been waiting for is coming in the next 12 days. I just saw the spirit. The phone call you've been waiting for will be here in 12 days. Mark the word of the Lord. It's coming for you. And God says, when you get the call, you will know it's from him. And that call is going to change the trajectory of your life. Amen. Who was that one? Prophecy, honey. That was somebody else. Oh, Miss Marcia. Which one? Oh, Miss Marcia. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? God bless you. God bless you. The devil is coming against your family in such a strong and unique way. I see a, a covenant with God that your family made way before you got here. And this is why the devil fights well, what's upon you, upon your family, and everything attached to your family. The devil fights it because of the covenant that was made with God way back before you even got here. I'm looking at a mantle, and this is a graceful mantle. My God, it's one that your great, great, great grandmother wore. She was a prayer warrior. And you have that same type of anointing upon your life. I see God, I see you in full manifestation into your calling and coming into that. I see you using that, that, um, your voice to change. God says you are his chief intercessor. That's why devils tried to kill you. That's why they try to take out your husband. He wanted to bring sadness. That's why the devils fight your daughters. My God in heaven. Because you are an intercessor ordained by God. To, you, almost, you have an Anna anointing upon your life. To wait. You know things because before they come. Just like Anna's prayers killed Herod. My God. Before the Messiah got here. Or when he got here. She covered something that no one knew anything else about. If you read the story of Anna. She covered the Lord Jesus. Her prayers assassinated a demon. And that's the type of grace upon your life. God is saying that you have such an arsenal inside of you. My God in heaven, you should be writing books on intercession now. You should be doing seminars on intercession now. Because it's already in you. You are built like that. That's why hell wants you out of here. Because if you got a revelation of the type of mantle that's upon you, you will make hell tremble. Your name is known in hell. Woo. Because God has double grace, that mantle upon you. And this is why, I'm seeing it so clear now, this is why hell fights you. And they, they have made a decree that they won't stop until you take your last breath. So this is why they come other ways. But God said, not so on this night. As you listen to the word of the Lord on this night. God says he's putting new fire upon your mantle, new fire upon your dreams, new fire upon your voice. You have the power, oh, I hear it so clear, to bind and to lose. You're going to have to take, hear the prophetic instruction, because this is important. The next 21 days, you're going to have to go into deep 
intercession for your family. Do not miss a day of intercession for your family. If God says, if you do that, if you follow that simple instruction, he doesn't care if it's two to 20 to 20 hours. If you go in the next 21 days of intense intercession for your family, it's almost like you are the new Joseph and you're going to save your family. Oh, my God in heaven. And the thing that hell has bought against your girls, God says he will reverse it. Matter of fact, he prophesied and decreed a divine breakup of demonized relationships. Even the snakes around your girls will be exposed. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, everyone. <laughs> I think I think I've, um, I've hit all the... <laughs> Even I can't, honey. My, my oldest daughter is uh, waiting on me, so I'm going to have to go. And, uh, and she goes back to, uh, back to Virginia Tech tomorrow. So I need to make sure that I spend some quality time uh, with my oldest baby, okay? It's been fun. Again, we're prophesying all month, amen, because we believe that God has something to say to his people, amen? And as you know, if you want to partner with sowing a seed, fine. I didn't ask for a dime because I serve God's people. You don't pay for property with me. I'm not like that. But if you want to partner with God's word to expedite your word, the cash app is on the screen. You can do that. I don't listen if you want to. It's okay. I believe every word spoken tonight, including the blessing, will is not only coming to pass, but you will see full manifestation of it. Amen. Listen, God bless you. Tune in Sunday. We have a powerful message. God's brewing up. We're talking about um, being not guilty. We're talking about coming out. And we're talking about the future and God's purpose for um, uh, mankind and, and th that cause. Amen. So God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful uh, weekend. It's Super Bowl weekend. You watch football. Uh, pick the right team. I'm a Giants fan, so I don't know who to pick. But I'm going to watch the game with my beautiful wife and my children. Um, so have a good week, and remember, there's nothing the devil can do that can hurt you. You are loved by God, and you are loved by family. Miss Emma King, get ready. You came out again to pop for me. Get ready, woman of God. Get ready. This is good. This is your year. This is your year, woman of God. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day, everyone.